I'll give you Adam and Ben. I'm Mark Erickson, and I am the lead singer of the band Avenue. I'm uh, Philip, I'm the guitarist and some vocals. I'm Wayne Philp, I'm the drummer in Avenue. My name is Mark Moffat. I joined Avenue in June, July 1977. G'day, I'm Roger Davidson, playing bass for Avenue in the, at the Adelaide gig, filling in for Dennis O'Carroll. It's a bit hard to get your head around the timeline from when it all started. I was the baby of the band, so I was a boy just out of high school and my friends were still in high school when I started. Living in a suitcase, I'm out on the road. Back in the 70s, uh, hanging out with my two best mates, Dennis and Wayne, who were in the band. Uh, basically as part-time roadie and just general hang around. The first day that I actually arrived at Mount Gamble, the first place I saw that was the music shop and one of the first uh, people I met was Phil Dunn. It was a, a special bond with the Avenue Band and they really were like family members so it is like getting and renewing a family relationship after quite a few years. <laughs> Trying to figure out where I'm up, oh, that's where I'm up to. No, no, it's mindfulness, you're locked into that. Oh, I started flute when I was just a kid, about eight or nine years old in school. Um, I come from a musical family. I'm the oldest of five kids. My father uh, just retired from 50 years in the symphony. My mother was the choir director of our church. Uh, five kids, uh, they kind of raised us to be like the trap family singers. We, I was, I've been performing on stage since I was six years old. It's been an incredible ride from the very beginning. Uh, I started playing with a lot of older men playing cabaret music. I didn't enjoy that much as a 13 year old. And then to walk straight from that into Avenue at barely 16 was mind blowing. The cutting edge band of Mount Gambia. We weren't playing 12 bar rock and roll like most bands. We were playing unusual music. For, we were the Triple J band at the time. We started off uh, when we would play, we would play these quiet little clubs to kind of get warmed up and learn things. And we would do things like People Are Strange by the Doors. And then um, other people would come up and go, why are you singing that song? Uh, get kind of confrontational. My fondest memories are probably supporting some of Australia's iconic bands, ACDC, Little River Band, Ice House, Choir Boys. I remember a few nice outdoor shows. Uh, opening for ACDC was a big one. Uh, I got to meet those guys backstage. They had just returned from their first US tour and they were living legends in their own minds, that's for sure. Uh, very, very rowdy, kind of scared me a little bit. I thought if I'm going to stick in rock and roll, I kind of hope that I don't get that insane. We'd set up and it was like bolt everything down for Mark Erickson because you're sure he's going to knock it over on the night. What suited me was we played on the edge and weren't afraid to improvise. Um, and it was aggressive and hardcore where it had to be. And then laid back and a little bit country when it had to be that. The most memorable night was our final night, which was a New Year's Eve. Uh, we played uh, well into the early hours of the morning, and when we started packing up, the sun was coming up. So it was really, it was an all-nighter. I also remember taking really fun breaks in between our fairly short sets. In those days, sets were five or six songs. Go sit down, have a drink, play some fun music that maybe nobody had ever heard before. And then meet a lot of the locals, go out into the van, smoke a joint, come back in. I always admired the music uh, when, I was, when I was a kid, you know, when I was a young teenager. And, um, and I played with Wayne, I played with Dennis, I played with Mark. I've done sound engineering for Phil. Um, the only one I haven't really had the opportunity to play with is Mark Erickson and to me this sort of completes the picture. Probably my most 
favourite memory of all was playing my high school social when I'd left the year before and joined Avenue and my friends and teachers were still at high school. So it was incredible to go from playing with old men into an absolute ass kicking rock and roll band. At that time, uh, Phil had written one song and um, the, uh, the band had decided to make an EP. The Avenue EP, well, it was recorded in Mount Gander in the Macadamia Studios and four original songs that uh, we did. And it charted uh, in Victoria and locally in the southeast and western Victoria and also in Melbourne, I think, we charted. Um, but it was, it was very special when you went out and played those songs and people, you could see them mouthing the words and you think, oh, that was a pretty special moment, probably some of the most memorable moments uh, you could see people responding to uh, songs that you'd written and, and uh, were your songs. Recording our EP in, I think it was in 78, uh, was very overwhelming um, because of the pressure of it and it being a new studio and my first time in the studio. I think every one of the songs has some meaning to me. Um, the one that Phil wrote, Sam, that's a good one. What does that song mean to you? Well, it starts out with travel this here land with you, my friend, you know. Now I think it's maybe coming to an end. So it means a lot. Travel this here land with you, my friend. But I think by now it may be coming to an end, yeah. It's just a pity, my friend, I've got this need to be free. Oh, free wind, free air, free love everywhere. Phil, our, uh, I would say, the organizer of our band, the real leader of the band, uh, was super positive, always encouraging us, uh, had good set lists, I think had a good vision for the band, made it so that we all were able to showcase our own talents without stepping on anybody else's shoes or anybody else's part. I'd done a little bit of songwriting and I ended up writing two more songs and then we'd actually started recording the EP and we had three tracks down and Mark Erickson, our flute player and lead singer, had actually written the lyrics and we're having a bit of a break and I went home for tea and I took the lyrics and then while I was home for tea I actually put music to it, so that completed the four songs for the EP. Just to get the chance to do that, and it's significant Mount Gambier history, it was incredible for Mount Gambier to have a recording studio, and Ross Williams, uh, he'd come from what we call the Melbourne Mafia, so some A-grade Melbourne musos moved over uh, at that time and lifted Mount Gambier's music scene through the roof. Um, and for him to do that and then do the recording studio and open it up for us uh, was incredible. Uh, tonight, well, we've had two full rehearsals and it's a bit like riding a bike. You get back on and uh, it did feel like uh, yeah, it was only yesterday. I'm apprehensive because we played on the edge and pushed the boundaries and it's very risky to do that with so little rehearsal after such a long time. I feel excited. Um, I feel like all the guys have put their hearts and souls into this first opportunity. So, you know, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be fun. I want to communicate with the folks and uh, help, help them feel like they're a part of this too. It's important. All the boys have gathered here now. They've all arrived in from, uh, from Mount Gambier and uh, USA. And so everybody's here 
Uh, we've loaded the vehicles up with PAs and guitars and amplifiers. So we're about to set sail to uh, the venue to, uh, to have a sound check. Continue that going uh, into uh, next week. Taking it easy, hitching rides on the freeway. shows and record a lot and get back to improvising and pushing the boundaries and I think if we're lucky enough to to live long enough to play again I think there could be some pretty special original stuff come out of it if, if the cards fall our way. Who knows you know the Rolling Stones are still doing it so uh, why not the Avenue Band? <laughs> <laughs> 